What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to draw wrinkles on clothing. Now what you see here, it's not really considered clothing, it's just a piece of ribbon. That's just to show an example of what I'm going to explain throughout the video. So what you see here is a, one piece of ribbon just laying on like, um, just laying on a surface or whatever. The other piece of ribbon is being pulled up by something. This is just a piece of tape with like a string attached to it, but that's just to show an example of what I'm about to explain. When you're drawing clothing wrinkles, and this applies to almost any kind of clothing or anything, but and it's really important to remember. When you're drawing wrinkles on clothing, you gotta figure out um, if it's being held up by something, because this is a lot of mistakes that people make. Um, they feel like that some parts of the clothing are being held up by like an invisible force which doesn't exist so that's why um this piece of tape right here with a string attached to it is holding this piece of ribbon up but let's just say this piece of ribbon is being held up at this all this position as well but there is no piece of tape holding it up so there's no like invisible force that could possibly hold this ribbon up to stand up just like this one so that's just really important to remember i also explained this in my video on how to draw hoods um I explained that um, when you're drawing hoods, the gravity doesn't really pull the back of the hood up like this, like making a curve that goes up like this. So if you're drawing clothes or specifically wrinkles, that's just really important to remember because you, you want to make the entire drawing make sense, you know? You don't want to make your drawing kind of questionable and everything, so that's why it's always important to remember that gravity pulls things down. Alright, but now, now that we got that squared away, let's move on to the actual drawing. Okay, so first we're going to focus on tension spots. What are they? So, when we look at clothing, it's basically a piece of fabric or cloth or anything. Tension spots are the wrinkles in the clothing that kind of... Uh, force it into a different shape like say I have a rag over here like I have a rag right here it's kind of dirty but try, try to ignore that but as you can see it's a piece of it's basically a piece of cloth or whatever and if I'm squeezing it or like forcing it to do whatever I want you're gonna see wrinkles around like the tension spots you see a lot of tension right there if I were to draw that then that space will kind of have a lot of wrinkles there because I'm forcing it to be a certain shape like say I'm twisting it now so you're gonna see kind of a twisty like a, a line structure if I were to draw this and you can also force it to do you know whatever and everything like that that's basically what would work on any kind of clothing so just be mindful of that but what you see over here is kind of smooth tension spots this is what I usually like to call it so try to put try to imagine this um, a bowling ball being put inside of a grocery bag the bowling ball is kind of heavy you know and a grocery bag is kind of light so if you put a bowling ball inside of a grocery bag the shape of the bottom of the grocery bag will kind of match the shape of the bowling ball and by doing that this kind of area is like really smooth so it'll kind of be a tension spot because you're forcing the grocery bag into a different shape or at least the bowling ball is but you kind of are if you were to hold the grocery bag as well so the bag will be forced into a different shape by whoever is holding the bag and the bowling ball that's inside of it creating a smooth tension spot down here the same thing goes for here let's just pretend this is like a empty Pringles can and we're gonna put like a piece of cloth over top of it which is what this is the smooth tension spot will be like a small area right around here and plus the other circle that's on this side because that's where the cloth is just like this one but that entire circle that's over here that's a smooth tension spot as well um, also a few other parts that are kind of off like on the cylinder if you know what I mean but that's where the smooth tension spot is or at least that's what I like to call it but that's what we're gonna pretty much do here for this um just to give you guys an example of how to do it on clothing let's see we got um two breasts here and we're gonna this is what I'm gonna do so we have the shapes here already drawn and everything I don't know if you can see that full circle but their circles here what I like to do is since they're kind of um, connected a bit I'm gonna take the um the shirt and I'm gonna draw lines across it just like this as um it's making the it's making it look as if the shirt is tight and the breasts are kind of stretching it out a bit because um let's just pretend these lines that I'm drawing it makes it look like it's like elastic making it stretch out a little bit so um even though that may not be the case, that's what I'm going to try to make it look like a little bit. So, and I'm not going to add too many, but it's always good to, you know, um, trial and error. If that makes sense, you can also um, add lines here. 
take away some lines, do whatever. And then no need to add wrinkles to like the breasts that are over here and here because they're smooth tension spots. So you won't need to add wrinkles anywhere because that area will kind of be smooth, you know. Um, anywhere around it, you can add tension spots or yeah. Sorry, anywhere around there, you can add wrinkles too. And I'll show you in a minute. But let me just draw those in real quick. Okay, and then you can add like a small um, few wrinkles underneath here. For like, we can we can kind of see that as like a shadow. So I'm going to add sort of a shadow going on down here. And then maybe a, a few other wrinkles right below it. Okay, and then I'm going to add a wrinkle right underneath here. Okay, and then now we're coming in because let's just let's just say the shirt is kind of smooth and everything. And then towards the bottom here, that's where this line is, the waistline. We're gonna add a couple wrinkles just like this. I like to do one on one side and two on the other. So we can add a big one and a small one. And we can possibly add two. So the both sides doesn't really matter we can do two or three one and two doesn't really matter okay and then i'm just gonna draw a line possibly connecting the two or one okay and now like i said we're kind of forcing fabric into a different shape when we're adding kind of wrinkles so this is what you see here um right above the breast right here is where the armpit is going to be and that's where the arm is going to start so I'm going to take like the point right here where the arm is going to lie, or the armpit actually. I'm just going to draw two lines coming up just like this. And then right here where we just started, we can just draw the arm in. I'm going to stop halfway, like right where the elbow is. I'm going to stop there. And then the same thing that we did here with the, um, with the armpit, we can add like a couple more wrinkles here, or more like the same thing that we did down here. And do two on one side and one on the other, and vice versa. And then do the same thing at the bottom. And that looks pretty good. So that's pretty much how you use uh, tension spots, specifically smooth tension spots. I didn't really touch on actual tension spots, but I actually explained to you what it is. So um, now that we got that squared away, let's move on so I can show you another way of drawing wrinkles. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss what tightness looks like. Um, if you don't know what tightness is, it's basically how tight clothing is um, when someone is wearing it. So what you see right here is uh, like... Let's just say it's a pair of jeans or maybe like denim fabric or whatever. That's going to be placed on this cylinder here. And that's what tightness looks like. It could be a little bit tighter than this, but I made it a little off just so it can um, not be too tight, but show a prime example of what I'm talking about in case you don't understand. But right here is like um, the same thing, but not as tight because um, you see it's kind of sagging off a little bit. That's the look I try to go for most of the time, unless told otherwise that the tightness of the clothing is like really, really tight. But I try to give it like more of a dynamic look if it is going to be tight. But this is the kind of look I go for most of the time when um, the clothing I draw doesn't really seem to be as tight as this one. But um, in some cases, I do tend to um, draw clothing as if it were this kind of tight. But there's not much detail to add here. So that's why when I do, do it this way, there's more detail to add. And that's what I kind of go for most of the time. So right here, I got some legs drawn here. I'm going to show you one way of doing it with lots of tightness and then the way I usually do it. So let's go right here. I'm going to show the exact shape. So as you can see, um, I did the tightness that we did here. It's just, you know, like I said, there's not much detail to add. Um, you could take things a step further, which I'll do over here in a second. But it just looks really, really plain. And I try to give my character sort of a dynamic look when I'm trying to draw their clothing on them. But um, let me switch to this side. So I'm going to show you how I usually do it. So I'm going to follow this line here for the leg and I'm going to have two lines like this, basically two commas because that's the knee. It kind of marks the halfway point of the leg, you know, and then I'm going to add a wrinkle right here, more like a triangle shape, just like this. And you can add two if you want, like another smaller one underneath it. 
and then come back down. And then the same thing we did on the other page, you can add that same triangle here and have it kind of sitting on top of that shoe. And again, you can add two on this side, two on three. And again, you can have two wrinkles on this side, one on the other, three on one, two on one, whatever. Whichever feels comfortable to you. But just try to make it asymmetrical. But anyway, I'm coming back up to that wrinkle that we did at the knee. And then we're gonna come all the way back up. Actually, I'm gonna start up here, then come back down. Okay, so now we pretty much got that down packed with all the um, wrinkles here and wrinkles there. But there's not much detail to, um, up here to add. But what I can do is I can go down to the crotch. I'm going to make sort of a triangle shape that's right here. So as you can see, the crotch is kind of triangle shaped when you do something like this. That's what I'm going to do with the jeans that are right here. Um, let's just say they're jeans. I mean, it doesn't look like jeans on this side, but we're going to call them jeans for now. So what I like to do is I like to make the crotch come off a little bit, something like this, and then maybe let's just add a pocket here. And sometimes when I'm drawing the pocket, I can just add like a small wrinkle there. Okay, so as you can see, like the big difference between this side and this side, this side kind of shows the tightness that we explained here, but again, it's not much detail if you just leave it alone just like this. But on this side, there's like a lot of more um, details, like the wrinkles that are up here at the crotch, uh, the knees, and then down here where the ankles are, and then a little bit on the outer parts, the contours of it. And that's basically how I draw the wrinkles for um, any of my characters. If, they're, um, if their clothes are that tight, then I tend to add wrinkles at least somewhere. Somewhere where I think there's going to be a crease in it. Somewhere like a tension spot, basically. It's going to be a tension spot like right here at the crotch. I like to, you know, I try to keep that in mind whenever I'm drawing any kind of character. But yeah, I just try to add wrinkles anywhere I can to create more of a dynamic look compared to this side. But anyway, let me switch to another page so I can show you one more way of drawing wrinkles. Okay, so what you kind of see here, um, I erased it too much, but it's two arms drawn here. And I'm going to explain to you what bagginess looks like. What is that? So basically, when you're wearing like a hoodie, it could be oversized, it could be not oversized, it could be kind of really tight on you. But that's basically what bagginess is. So, um... When something's kind of oversized, it's going to kind of sag on you. Basically holding a bag of something, so it's going to kind of sag along your arm. So let me show you an example. So I'm going to draw kind of like a cuff here at the wrist. I'm going to draw like a sleeve on like a typical sweater. Again, like I mentioned in the beginning, you got to focus on gravity because gravity plays an important part in drawing wrinkles. So it's not going to be held up somehow. Like um, I can draw this one hanging up like that. That's okay. But if you have it hanging up like way up here, then it won't make sense because nothing is pulling the hoodie up. So if you're, um, if the hoodie is kind of baggy, like very, very baggy, then a lot of it will kind of sag on the bottom because gravity pulls things down. So as you can see, there's, um, we're going to exemplify some tightness only on the top part of the arm, which is up here. And then remembering the elbow, that's the stopping point. That's what I usually do. And then add a few wrinkles right there. But you don't really need to add wrinkles, like a lot of them, to the baggy part of it. Because it'll kind of sag. But what you can do sometimes, in some cases, you can draw it as if it were drapery. As it kind of folds down like a piece of cloth hanging from something. Almost just like this. If you get what I'm saying. But um, you don't necessarily have to. Because it's kind of a sleeve. It's hanging off of something already. So, um... I think you can do something just like this. That's pretty practical. And just add a few wrinkles like here and there if you'd like. And also keeping a tension spot over here for their armpit and then their uh, hand. And see, now that's making sense. Let me show you another way of doing it. So you can have it basically, you can have it kind of balanced, having it equal on both sides and that's pretty normal. Just like this, a wrinkle on the elbow and lines. Add some up here as well. And then not much needed to do on the arm. Because it's kind of like a puff shape almost. And um, it kind of balances the, um, the bagginess that's on the arm here, if that makes sense. Because 
Not a lot of bagginess over here, not a lot of bagginess over here. So that's pretty good. You can do it that way or have it actually sagging like we did up here. So there's two definite options, but always keep in mind gravity will we'll always pull it down. So that's my video on drawing wrinkles and ruffles on clothing. If you liked the video or found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.